KWWL Television, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids. This is the New Center 7 10 o'clock report. The latest news, weather, and sports. Good evening. Iowan Catherine Cove has come through it remarkably well. I'm Ron Steele reporting live tonight from the National Cattle Congress. In the Saudi Arabian desert, I'm Ron Steele. I had a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with President Bush. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Steele. Good evening, everyone from Atlanta. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Steele. I'm Ron Steele. And I'm Elizabeth Fling. Now, join KWWL in celebrating 50 years of steel. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Kling. Tonight, we are celebrating an incredible milestone, Ron Steele's 50-year career with KWWL. I sat down with Ron to take a look back at his five decades of covering the big stories across Eastern Iowa and the nation. And we talk about his favorite moments, hear from some of his co-anchors through the years, and dig into some of the stories that he felt most passionate about. And most importantly to him, the connections he made with viewers and the community. But let's start at the beginning. So, you grew up where? So I was born in Washington, Iowa, but I spent most of my childhood in a little town called Wapolo, Iowa. I always wanted to be a disc jockey. So I would actually carry a tape recorder with me, you know, around and do ball games. If I wasn't playing, I would go to the game and maybe record a, like I was doing the play-by-play -play of the games. And, and specifically for sports, and that was actually how you started in the yes. industry, was doing sports. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my wife and I met as students at the University of Iowa, but she was from Waterloo. We were home one uh, weekend and her dad said, did you hear KWW Channel 7 sports director Mike O'Connor is leaving? I literally raced out of that house at 529 Hilltop Road and came down to this television station and with my video resume, which was a, just a cassette tape in those days. So I sat in the lobby for about 30 minutes until the general manager came out and his name was Jim Bradley. He had a Southern accent, he was from the South. And he said, boy, I understand you got something for me. He took my tape, and that was it. There was no, I don't know what I was expecting. I showed up unannounced, but uh, I didn't hear from him for about three months. The legendary uh, news director, Grant Price, mm -hmm. called me. I believe it was in late, uh, I don't know, December or November of um, 1973, and he offered me the job as sports director. And uh, I accepted, and I took it on April 1st, so I'd had a birthday. So I, when I started here, I was 24 years old. I think I might have been the youngest sports director in the Midwest, or certainly one of the youngest. Most of the Major League Baseball teams hold their spring training camps in either Arizona or in Florida. That started a career that has lasted uh, a lot longer than I thought because my wife said to me, you know, she looked me right in the eye and she said, you know, we're not going to stay here more than two years in my hometown of Waterloo. Well, here we are a long, a long time later. Here you are. I guess we'll just wait till tomorrow, okay? And there was a, a lot of things going on in the country that time where people were moving from sports to news. Some of them worked out and some of them didn't. So Bill Bolster gave me a chance to become the news anchor here in 1979 and that's kind of there was some apprehension about that but uh, it worked out pretty well overall I guess. In this job there's a lot of good days a lot mm -hmm. of fun days a lot of fascinating days there's also a lot of extremely difficult days and a lot of extremely hard stories to cover that uh, are so emotional and, and gut-wrenching and they stick with you for a mm -hmm. long time and you've had several of those. Yeah, anytime there's a loss of life, it, it really, you know this, it bothers us, it really does. The most difficult stories for me, one of them happened in 1981. Uh, two members of the Waterloo Police Department were murdered. Uh, it was a terrible week for our community. Uh, there was a manhunt for the suspect that lasted all week until Friday. So, you know, Wayne Rice, and Mike Hoeing, tough to even talk about those guys, as I knew, knew Wayne. Um, and then uh, there was an accident in the middle of the week and Bill Mulliken, a U.S. Marshal, got killed. My good friend John Seawick was seriously injured in that crash, almost died, and two other people involved in the crash that week. They thought they had seen the suspect. They died in the crash. They thought they had seen the suspect near LaPorte City and everybody was rushing to the scene. That was a very difficult story. 9-11, uh, tremendous and difficult for everybody, of course. There was an Iowan, Karen Kincaid of Waverly. She died on flight American Airlines Flight 77 going into the Pentagon. And I've stayed in contact with her um, brother, 
uh, Pastor Christian Kincaid of Dubuque. Stories like that are difficult. You know, of all the things that I've heard, so much has been said and written about 9-11, but I think of all the things I've heard this week, the thing that stands out most in my mind was the words of a little girl. She said, well, she lost her father in the World Trade Center disaster exactly one year ago today, and she said, if you have a dad, spend a lot of time with him. Kind of sums it up here. The one story I, I'd hope to get to get covered and uh, solved someday is Larry and Elizabeth, that case involving the missing girls from Evansdale, the kidnapping, the murders. Hey, Dad, it's me. I miss you. Bye. I love you. Including the last voicemail Drew would ever receive from his daughter, Elizabeth. I want to get that case taken care of. It's not going to bring them back. I'd like to figure out a way that we can get that thing, uh, get somebody to justice on that. And of course, then they, the floods of 2008 and the Parkersburg tornado. Up to Coach Thomas again today, Ed Thomas, the legendary football coach, just so passionate about trying to rebuild this community because this is his town, this is our town. We all kind of live in the same area and I think we're all touched by what has happened here. That tornado hit the southern edge of Parkersburg there and uh, you know nine people died in that tornado. That was a tough week. Uh, KWWL did a telethon that week for the American Red Cross. I think we were on the air and raised almost $400,000 uh, in a 24-hour period. Later that year, of course, everybody was talking about Coach Thomas and how his players had, you know, dug graves for the local victims and things like that. We covered the first home game after the tornado. Live from Parkersburg, KWWL Television welcomes you to this special edition of Friday Night Football more than a game as the Falcons. And we did it live on the air, and that was a, that was a real thrill. again. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Steele. Welcome to Parkersburg, Ed Thomas Field, the Sacred Acre. What a privilege it is for me to be here tonight and for KWW. And then, of course, we know what happened to Coach Thomas the following year. So those are difficult stories even to talk about for me after all these years. The Iranian hostage crisis was November 4th, 1979. And lo and behold, the Americans are taken hostage. And one of the two women is Catherine Cove from nearby Jessup. You can never imagine how much the letters and your prayers and your support through all of this have meant to us. So she was one of the only two women held the entire 444 days. So we covered that extensively. And then I had the privilege of, uh, I'll show you a piece of video here that is almost embarrassing to look at, but I'm doing what we call, as you know in the business, a stand-up at the White House. Iowan Catherine Cobe has come through it remarkably well. This station has always been able to and been willing to send us wherever we needed to go. So when the Gulf War broke out, you know, in late 1990, uh, in August when uh, they invaded Kuwait and they set a deadline then, uh, you know, you better do something about it. So we went, actually went to Saudi Arabia. In the Saudi Arabian desert, I'm Ron Steele. Joel Dickman and I will have the latest on the Persian Gulf crisis tonight on Iowa's News Channel. We were there for 23 days, the only Iowa station there at the time. For situations like that, did you get nervous? We did um, go into a bomb shelter a couple of times, yeah. In fact, I still had the gas mask that they gave us. And Joel and I, did we did live with the family there after we left our hotel, went into their bomb shelter. We, you know, you, you knew things were going on around you. I, I would not say that that kind of stuff doesn't bother me too much. It was more exciting than anything else. Mm. Just wondering about what's going to happen, you know. One of the most fun trips that we took was with the Iowa Army National Guard. You know, the, uh, it's called Boss Lift, where the bosses of the ser servicemen and women have a chance to go on the training mission to see why they're gone for two weeks every summer, you know. And that was really fun. I had a chance to fire a very unique weapon. This is the M60 machine gun, gas operated, range 1100 meters, capable of 550 rounds per minute. We just had a wonderful time meeting the uh, members of the soldiers of the Iowa Army National Guard on their training mission, and that was, that was really a lot of fun. The bosses learned the capabilities of weaponry. You've also had the privilege of covering many honor flights with. Yes. Uh, the veterans off to Washington, D.C. to see uh, the monuments and things, and that has to be so incredibly emotional. Yeah. Too. What makes this trip so special, each veteran has a very unique story, like Jim Stevenson, a hero on Iwo Jima. He won the Navy Cross. That's a terrific trip. I've had a chance to go on four honor flights. In fact, I'm going to go on one in May, my, May 28th of this year. Uh, yeah, they go out to a lot of the World War II veterans, like my father was. Uh, they never talked about that, you know, and it's really hard to get them to talk about it. And now all the World War II veterans are 
you know, passing away at a rapid rate. And now they've moved down into the Korean War area and also Vietnam, who are making the honor flights. You've had many encounters with presidents through the <laughs> years, uh, whether it's at the White House or on Air Force One. And I know you yeah. have an interesting story about um, a trip on Air Force One. So I'm building a deck one day at Hudson. My daughter says, Dad, the White House is on the line. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, right. She said, oh, get in here. They want to talk to you. So I went in and they said, if you can be in Albuquerque, New Mexico by noon Monday, President Bush at the time is coming back to Iowa. He was in a very tough race, of course. I think he knew he was probably going to lose that race to Bill Clinton. And he said, well, you can come back and interview him on board Air Force One. So I figured out a way to get there. And sure enough, we got on the plane and uh, we had a chance with a one on one interview for five minutes. Now, earlier today on board Air Force One, I had a chance to sit down one on one with President Bush. Oh, is there any um, encounter with any of the presidential candidates that sticks out in your mind or eventual actual presidents? Um, you've, you've met <laughs> of a number course. of them through the yeah, years. Yeah, I've uh, had a chance to interview a lot of candidates. Um, uh, a lot of, uh, well, President Obama, when he came to Cedar Rapids, the top celebrity in the world. This campaign can do better than that. It had both uh, President Bush's, of course, and uh, uh, President Bush came to Cedar Rapids one time with Laura, his first, uh, the first lady, and I really wanted to interview her. As it turns out, I got a chance to interview her, and I also interviewed the president the same day, and later on, I forgot that I even interviewed the president because I was so excited to interview the first lady because I was very interested in her background and uh, how do people get from point A to point B and what, what makes them tick, you know, and that was a very interesting day. And I think George is that kind of leader. Laura Bush says her husband is a man of character and integrity, and yes, it does hurt to hear him criticized on a daily basis. And of course, uh, President Trump, well, you can watch this. He fired me on my own show. And if I was on The Apprentice, uh, what would you have to do to me? I would say you're a tough guy, you're a smart guy, but I just don't like you. Ron, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the story of my life. Coming up, we hear about some of the behind the scenes fun from Ron's former co-anchors, and we look back on some of his most memorable sports events. Let's talk about some of your former co-anchors. You know, the people you work with, working with you is fantastic. I've had seven on air wise, I guess I could say. Uh, you know, uh, this was a male dominated business when I started. We had uh, one woman doing uh, the noon news at the time, Kathy Spielman. Good afternoon, I'm Kathy Spielman. Really, really fantastic person. Went on to become a lawyer, left us and got a real job, I guess we could say. But you know, then Liz Mathis came along. First really main anchor in the market. Did such a terrific job. This is the New Center 7 6 o'clock report with Ron Steele, Liz Mathis. Bobby Earls, fantastic. She's still over in the Dubuque area doing wonderful things. This is KWWF, Iowa's news channel with Ron Steele, Bobby Earls. Ann Curian has become a real sought after life coach around the country. You're watching Iowa's news channel with Ron Steele. And Carrion. And then followed by Tara Thomas. This is the Floods of 2008, a special edition of our KWWL News. And then Amanda Goodman. You're watching KWWL. We've got you covered with Ron Steele, Amanda Goodman. And then uh, Abby Turpin. And good evening, everyone. I'm Abby Turpin. And I'm Ron Steele. Right here in town, still working for a national nonprofit organization. And now you. You're only as good as the people around you. And uh, all of the female anchors that I've had have just uh, raised my game to a level that I never thought it would reach. We were able to sit down with a few of those former co-anchors. KWWL's Daniel Perot talked with them for an inside look at the true Ron Steele. He is somebody who is a rare breed, a longevity that will never be replicated. On air and off, Ron Steele is the real deal. What you see is what you get. As a journalist. He's fair, he's respectful, he's honest. For five decades, Ron has reported the news and told Eastern Iowa's story with grace and compassion, focusing on the people. He treats everyone as if they are the most important piece and center of that story. Tara Thomas says sitting next to Ron was nerve wracking at first. There is a little bit of that intimidation factor, but he's so relatable and so down to earth. He's one of those that you'll always remember because of the impact that he's had on your life. And for me, Ron Steele is one of those foundational people that absolutely made me the person who I am. 
He's the godfather to Liz Mathis' son. Bobby Earl says he's been there for all the big events in her daughter's life. What means so much to me is that he not only cares about you as a co-worker, he cares about you as a person. Game for almost anything, Liz Mathis says Ron can laugh at himself and let us laugh along with him. It was a blast. He made it so much fun. Like his occasional sprint to the studio seconds before the newscast. The concept of time for Ron is like Ron's time, and he never seems to sweat the seconds that are ticking by. It's that ad-libbing that makes Ron who he is. Oh, the ad-libbing and going off script. We'll be sitting here at home and watching him, and I'm going, oh, no, there he goes. Oh, oh, you know, sometimes he can't get out of it. I always found that absolutely astonishing that he could take a story, rewrite it as he's reading it, and have it come across almost better than what it was written the first time. For five decades, Ron has been that calm voice guiding Eastern Iowa through the good times and bad. Daniel Pro, News 7, KWWL. I think I might have been the youngest sports director in the Midwest, or certainly one of the youngest. And in those days, everybody wanted to do basketball. And I said, you know, Dan Gable is from Waterloo, Iowa. Why don't we talk to Dan? He's the assistant coach at Iowa with Gary Kirtlemeyer. And we went down and talked to them about doing Hawkeye wrestling. So we did, we did a Hawkeye wrestling show and it was very, very popular. And this is a picture that I have of, of me interviewing uh, Dan Gable after one of the meets in the old Iowa field house. And then of course, Gary Kirtlemeyer retired and then Dan Gable became the most successful wrestling coach, you know, ever. And we, it was just a really successful program. Then uh, Bill Bolster, the gentleman who uh, was the general manager at the time, suggested that we try to do some Iowa basketball games. And we did an experimental, couple of experimental games. We wanted to see what, what the ratings were gonna be like on Iowa basketball. Well, they went through the roof. I, it, was un, it was unbelievable. We, uh, uh, the next year, I, I moved to News. We brought in a guy named Bob Hogue, and people remember, oh my, oh my. Those shows became the most watched in the history of the market. Oh. Uh, and it was just, just incredible. We were getting over a 90 share. You could never repeat that today. You made the crossover from sports to news, but we're still able to go back and visit the sports world with oh, some stories here and there. And yeah. and it's remained a passion of yours. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, when you grow up as a kind of a semi-athlete, an overachieving athlete, it's always <laughs> in your blood. And you'll notice I have now suited up for the big game. I'll be number 66 on the offensive line for the St. Louis Rams this afternoon. I know what you're thinking. Now, please let me have my dream, OK? I'm Ron Steele in Atlanta at Super Bowl 34 for Iowa's News Channel. Yeah, I've always enjoyed sports. That's why I love doing Friday Night Football for Rick and, and Mark and those guys in the sports department. Good assignment for me, and thank you that. Both of these teams, however, looking to bounce back. Shooting games and uh, discovering. People might not know that unless they've seen you out of the games working hard, but you, you know, the six o'clock news gets done. I you jet. change clothes and you are out the door as fast as you can go to go shoot highlights exactly. of these games because you love it that much. Yeah, it's really fun. As Ron Steele joins us live in nope. studio for this one. Ron, what happened tonight? I'm about to tell you, Rick. <laughs> as you know, we were uh, NBC station carrying the Olympics in 1996, and I had a chance to carry the torch. And they told us, oh, there's probably going to be a crowd at Mays Island of about 8,000 people. Well, over 60,000 people uh, showed up. And I had the torch, so I got to, I was the last guy of the day, so I got to light the cauldron. And Cedar Rapids Mayor Lee Clancy was standing up there, and I didn't realize how close I got to her, but I almost set her hair on fire. And I thought, oh my gosh, what are you, pay attention, you know? <laughs> then I got a chance to light the cauldron. That was a thrill though. We had no idea that that many people were gonna show up and then I even actually saw my family in the front row. So and the had, mayor's hair was okay. Mayor's hair was okay, but that, oh boy. Sorry, <laughs> Lee, about that. No. Close call. <laughs> or three live online webcams available anytime if you wanna check it out online. So we have this new camera that gives us a view of Sundown Mountain. <laughs> yes. And uh, I think uh, every time we look at that, we reminisce about an adventure that you had there. Yeah, well, the Olympics, NBC, of course, has had the Winter Games for many times, so we decided to have everybody on the staff here, on-air people, go over and, and to pick a sport. So we went to Sundown. Well, Tony Lobianco is my ski instructor here at Sundown Ski Resort, west of Dubuque. This is our Whistler Mountain for the day. We're gonna learn how to alpine ski. 
and Tony Lobianco was my instructor and I was the alpine skiing person of the day and I had the voice of the Hawkeyes, my friend Gary Dolphin, voice the uh, kind of my downhill adventure. Here comes Ron. Ron appears to be having some difficulty. Oh, uh oh, trouble. Might be out of control here. I'm gonna go around him. You know, Ron reminds me sometimes of Jean-Claude Keeley and Bodie Miller and Alberto Tamba, maybe Ingemar Stenmark, but uh, today he looks more like Ron Steele. Coming up, it's about more than a story. For Ron, it's about the people. We'll hear about the special connections he's developed with community members across Eastern Iowa. Let's talk about the Iowa's Child Adoption Program. It holds a special place in your heart. The Iowa's Child Program, we, uh, we featured kids who needed to be adopted. And uh, I think we probably had three over 300 kids on the air. Some of them got adopted, some of them didn't. I still hear from a lot of those kids from time to time. He was just eight years old. Tell me about Dylan Dostal. <laughs> Dylan Dostal is a young man that I met in down in Tama County. He was about five or six years old. He had a brain tumor. So I went to his class, we did a story with him, and then did, they did some fundraisers and things like that. I remember I gave him my Super Bowl hat, and I stayed kind of off and on in contact with Dylan until just last year I actually did a story on this group out of Waverly called RIM, Restore Independent Mobility, and it turns out that Dylan was the first recipient of their power wheelchairs. And so I had been in contact with him, just a terrific person. He had gone on the make a, the kind of the Make-A-Wish, the Magical Mix Kids, uh, a uh, trip to Florida when he was a child, so I had stayed in contact with him. Unfortunately, Dylan uh, did contract an illness just uh, a little over a year ago and died at age 30. Mm -hmm. But I'd known him since he was five years old. And again, it's one of those things where you go, wow, this, uh, this is really important. You know, yeah. I miss him a lot. This is a special edition of The Steel Report. That show, Elizabeth, has really given us um, kind of the opportunity to do longer form segments. Uh, we've done one hour specials, many of them over the years. Uh, this one in particular, a mental health special. We did a one hour special on bridging the gap following the 24-7 uh, Wall Street report which labeled Waterloo then as the worst place in America for African Americans. I've always tried to give a voice to area minorities. Uh, here's a photograph that I really like. This is Waterloo legendary civil rights icon Anna Mae Weems. Remember, she brought Martin Luther King Jr. to Waterloo in 1960. Oh, no! Another fun story I did was with the late Gene Kling, and Elizabeth, I understand no relation to you, but Gene was the winningest coach in Iowa basketball history, over a thousand victories, a very colorful man with his socks, and he certainly missed for sure. Speaking of basketball, uh, the KWW Super Shooters, really quite a hit for many years. We would go into the small towns on Sunday afternoons and raise money for local projects. Uh, one sports highlight I wanted to mention early in my career was getting to interview uh, the great golfer, legendary Arnold Palmer. Here's a photograph after I chased down uh, Lance Armstrong for an interview. This was at the Cedar Falls Ragbri in 2008. The city of Waterloo named a street after me on my 30th anniversary, and my boys had some fun with that, as you can see in this picture. It was only for one week, though. I've always tried to help promote the Special Olympics in this area and statewide. Scratch Cupcakery let me create a Ron Steele cupcake for a charity fundraiser. People have made signs about me like this one. You guys wait with the camera there, okay? I've been to so many schools, it would take the entire program to name them all, but I can always say I've always enjoyed talking to classes and meeting as many students as possible. I had a great time doing the Ice Bucket Challenge with Jim Koloff and Dave Brayton. <laughs> The University of Northern Iowa are proud to present the And don't forget of best of class. Tice Alt, Lone Tree High School. That's Tice Alt. He was the Lone Tree Valedictorian last year. And get this, the entire Alt family was a KWWO best of class. Dad Bill, their mom Sheila, when they were in high school at Lone Tree, and then all three of their kids were KWWO best of class. And I just think that is definitely a pretty cool situation. That accident, by the way, brings a total of at least five traffic fatalities across the state of Iowa so far. We're not just here on the set and, you know, doing, you know, reading stories that are meaningless. We, we care about these people because, like I say, the viewers make all the difference in the world. The people you work with and the people that you're serving, uh, the viewers are very important uh, to us and have been extremely important to me. You have such a connection to your community and, and you live in a small town, everybody knows everybody, you go to the post office to get your mail mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, what do people ask you about when you're, when you're out? I mean, because everybody knows you. 
it's hardly anything about the news. Mm -hmm. It's usually just personal stuff, you know. My favorite stop is the Hudson Post Office every day. That's how boring <laughs> my life is, but I really enjoy that. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention real quickly, um, the station has always promoted, um, you know, our on-air talent. And the one thing I thought was really effective over the years, viewers really have kind of, they watched my kids grow up. They watched our kids grow up with these promos that they did around Christmas time and uh, kind of featuring the families. That was really, I thought was one of the most effective uh, promotions that KWWL had done over the years. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Folks. Dad. <laughs> 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 We're supposed to be looking for a Christmas tree. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us to celebrate Ron's 50th anniversary at KWWL. Let's take a look at more behind the scenes clips and memorable moments from his incredible career. I'm Ron Steele, our summer commitment. <laughs> hey, that's a little bit long for me. Why don't I have, uh, why doesn't lips? <laughs> lips. <laughs> hey, let's have lips pick it up. <laughs> There's hey, no shine so. at all. Hey, there's, you notice my shine's gone? Did you go get that? Myself and my cameraman, Henry Hahn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, children, let's come inside now, okay? As always, thanks so much for watching here tonight. Be careful out there. We'll see you tomorrow.